All right, welcome to the foiling reverse foiling lesson. I want to let you know that this lesson is designed for beginners. So if you feel like you have this stuff down, you probably want to move on to another lesson. But if this material has always given you problems or you just need to brush up, especially on reverse foiling, stick around. I'm going to help make it crystal clear for you. Okay, first thing, you got to know what foil stands for. And that's first, outer, inner, last. And how do you apply that? Well, when you're multiplying two expressions such as these, x plus 2 times x plus 3, if you want to solve it, the first thing you got to do is multiply the first terms. So the first one here is x, the first one here is x, x times x, x squared. Now let's do the outer terms. So those are going to be the terms on the outside. x times positive 3, positive 3x. Now let's do the inner terms. Are the terms on the inside. Positive 2 times x, positive 2x. And notice how I'm just writing down what I get. And let's do the last terms, or the terms on the ends. Positive 2 times positive 3 gives me positive 6. And it's at this point that all you're going to do is combine like terms. So I'll bring down the x squared. 3x plus 2x gives me 5x. And I'll bring down the 6. And you're done. That's it. So let's do another example. Let's make sure uh, you know how to do this. We'll get a lot of practice in today. So let's do, let's do one with a negative. x minus 4 times x plus 6. All right, let me move that up. And I guess we'll write foil on the side here just to keep it fresh in our memory. And you can pause the video if you want. Try it on your own and come back and, you know, see if you got the right answer. So first, x squared outer x times positive 6 positive 6x inner negative 4 times x negative 4x last negative 4 times 6 negative 24 let's combine like terms and we get x squared 6x minus 4x positive 2x and we'll bring down the minus 24 and that's it you're done Let's do another one. Let's do one with two negatives. All right. Let's do x minus 3 times x minus 5. Okay. Let me move that up a little bit. Again, you can pause the video if you want to try it on your own. Let's try and do it by memory now, so I'm not going to write down FOIL. First, x times x. x squared. Outer, negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Inner, negative 3 times x, or negative 3x. And last, negative 3 times negative 5, well, a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So you got to combine like terms. And this can be a little confusing for students when you have a, a negative minusing another number. So one time a student taught me a nice little trick. He goes, do you like KFC? And I go, yeah, sure. And he writes it down and he goes, well, that stands for keep, flip, change. So that makes it easier. Negative 5 plus negative 3, you get negative 8x. A nice little, I don't know, trick to remember that. I'll bring down the other terms, the 15, and you're done. All right, so I gave you three examples on how to foil. As long as you remember first, outer, inner, last, you can get these right. So foiling goes in this direction. When we're going to go from, from the double bubble to here. Reverse foiling, you start off with an expression like this, and I ask you to bring me back to the double bubble. So let's give, let's, it's a fun word to say, double bubble. Let's, uh, let's do a little section on reverse foiling. So let me make a little thing here. Okay, with reverse foiling, why don't I give you the example of x squared plus 5x plus 4. So now I want you to, to break this one down for me. And I started off with an easy one. But step one, you know, I said you want to find double bubbles. So step one is you're going to draw or write out your double bubbles. Step two, put in your x's, right? Because we're trying to get x squared. we got to have x's in the first spot. Step three, we have to figure out the last terms. And this is probably the most important point. Uh, our last terms have to multiply to this number but add to this one. Multiply this one and add to this one. So you want to ask yourself, what times what gives you four? 
Well, you can do 4 times 1, but you could also do 2 times 2. So how do you know which one to pick? Well, I'll do it wrong first. Let's say you pick 2 and 2. So all your signs are positive, so those are going to be positive. So you know that, and if we, if we foil this out, first, x squared, outer, 2x, inner, 2x, last, 4. And when you do this one out, you get x squared plus 4x plus 4. And what happened? Well, we got the last term, but when we, when we added our middle terms, we got 4x. We didn't get 5x. So we know this is wrong. So you've got to be careful when you pick your last terms to make sure that it has to be able to add to the middle one. So that's wrong. So this has to be x plus 1, x plus 4. And that should make sense, right? Because 1 times 4, we're going to get our 4. Remember, we're always concerned with the last terms. So 1 times 4 gives us 4. And then we're going to have 1x plus 4x. And that will give us 5x. So I kind of did that one a little fast. But it's the idea that you want to multiply to this and you want to add to that. Okay? Let me give you another example. So let's see. And again, you guys can pause the video and try this on your own to make sure to see if you got it right. Let's do x squared minus 7x plus 10. Okay? So let's say we had that problem. What's step one? Put your double bubble down. Step two, put in your x's. Alright, step three. We gotta figure out these last terms so, so that when they multiply, they give us that number, and when they add, they give us that number. So how many different ways can I multiply to 10? Well, you can do 10 times 1, or 5 times 2, right? Now, which one of these pairings do you think is probably better? If you said 5 times 2, you're correct. Because if you do, if you put a 10 here and a 1 here, how am I ever going to get a negative 7, right? There's no way. So we'll put our 5 here, we'll put our 2 here. Now we got to ask ourselves, are this, what's, what's the, what are the signs? Are they all positive? Well, they can't be all positive because we'll never get a negative number in the middle. So you're going to have to make these negative. All right, and that should make sense because negative 5 times negative 2 gives you positive 10. And when you, when you, excuse me, when you foil this out, your outer is negative 2x, your inner is negative 5x, and when you combine those, you get negative 7x, right? Keep, flip, change. All right, so I know in the beginning, maybe it's a little tough when you're trying to figure out, you know, what numbers should you pick for that last spot. And it takes some practice, but remember, you got to multiply this number, you got to add to that one. Let's do another example. Let's see if I can get this done fast because we're running out of time. Uh, 2x squared plus 8x plus 8. What are you going to do in this situation? Well, don't get intimidated because there's the 2 in front of the x squared. You can actually factor that out. So let's pull out a 2. What's left? x squared plus 4x plus 4. Right? This 2, when you multiply by each one, has to give you the original thing back. So 2 times x squared, 2x squared. 2 times 4x, 8x, and so on. So now we can factor what's in the brackets here. So let me do my, I kind of did it like that. Let me do my double bubble. Put our x's in first. How do I get to 4? I'm going to speed this up here. I can do 4 and 1, but that's never going to get me to 4. So it's got to be 2 and 2. All my signs are positive, so these are going to be positive. All right? Real quick, let me give you a quiz. If I asked you... Where's my quiz question? x squared minus 11x uh, minus 26. Would you guys be able to solve that? You can pause the video and try. And your answer is, where did I put that? x plus 2 and x minus 13. So there's your quiz. If you got that, you passed the uh, foiling, reverse foiling quiz.